a rated browser support chart uh, that Yahoo publishes. Um, so you can see it's uh, four by seven or so. Uh, it's, it's pretty manageable. So I built one for mobile. Um, and this is, this is the mobile the rated browser support chart. Um, it's significantly more complex. Um, uh, many browsers by uh, many platforms, and especially uh, platforms in different versions. So a lot, uh, almost every single uh, platform ships with a browser built in, and those browsers vary in quality. Uh, so the, the first column here, oh, we got to, oh, it's kind of hard to see, but so this this column here is the native browser on the platform. Um, and then we have uh, Opera browsers, um, Fennec, uh, Ozone, Netfront, and PhoneGap here at the end. Um, so the, at least for, what I, what I used to do my grading was that I used a combination of market share and browser quality. So um, an A grade browser is both a good quality browser and it has a decent level of market share. Uh, whereas maybe a B level might have, it, it might be a perfectly fine browser, but it probably doesn't have that much market share to work about. Um, so at least for jQuery core, uh, we're gonna be supporting all A and B level browsers. Um, it's gonna be a significant level of work, and it's more than doubling our browser coverage. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be fun. Uh, so I just wanna say, it's, it's, it's full of browsers, there's so many. Um, all right, so when it comes to testing, uh, actually testing uh, your websites on a mobile device, uh, you have two options. One is testing on a physical device uh, that's running the operating system uh, of your choice in the, the browser, um, and additionally running an emulator. Now, virtually everything, uh, virtually all the browsers that I mentioned have uh, an emulator or simulator uh, available for download. Um, they work fairly well, uh, with a couple exceptions um, uh, of, of just bits of weirdness that occur, uh, which I'll, 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 get, I'll get into. But, um, so at least for automated testing, simulators work pretty well, in that you can, you can push your tests to it, collect some automated results back, and you can get a general feel for how things work on the devices. But when it comes time to doing actual interaction testing, you have to be doing it on a physical device. And so if, this, if, it, if it takes hiring a whole bunch of interns to sit there and be pushing buttons on a device, then you gotta do that. Uh, because uh, nothing beats trying on a physical device uh, in comparison to a simulator. You can't get the same experience if you're using something like a, a trackball or if you have something has weird motion gestures. You, you just you have to be able to accommodate, uh, accommodate for that. Uh, when it comes to simulators, uh, the quality of the simulator varies rather dramatically. Uh, some people publish, or some companies publish really excellent simulators and they're a blast to use, and other ones do not. Um, and it's really, really frustrating. And then when it comes time for testing, what you can do is, um, it, it's really going to depend on your situation, but at least for doing uh, automated testing, where you don't have to do interaction work, um, I definitely recommend using something like uh, Test Swarm, which, which I developed last year. And Test Swarm works by, uh, essentially it's, it's a very lightweight web page that you can open in any device. Any device is capable of opening a web page. And it's able to run JavaScript tests and submit results back to a server. And so what's really nice about this is that it works on desktop devices, it works on mobile devices, and uh, so this is really great. So like right here we have a whole bunch of different browsers we got this column here uh, at the end is an our Android devices. Um, over here is we have a iPhone at the very end, some Palm Pre. So all those are running on physical devices. Um, I have a, a pile of phones on my desk, and they're all just have the, the swarm page loaded up, and they just sit there and just run the tests over and over. Um, so at least in this way, it's making it very easy to test against them, or at least a heck of a lot easier than having to sit there and fiddle with the phone and reload the, the, the test page uh, every once in a while. So, the platforms. I wanted to talk a little bit about the different platforms that exist um, and sort of what you, what you can expect uh, out of them. 
and specifically with their native browsers as well. So Symbian, uh, Symbian specifically Symbian Series 60, uh, is uh, the most popular operating system in the mobile space. Absolutely. And it's used by Nokia on a, on a good number of their devices. Version 5.0 is the most current. That's used on their touchscreen uh, devices. And then there's the, the 3.0 uh, series, which is used on the, the older, you know, e either uh, uh, the navigational devices, not, not touchscreen. They've released a couple of feature packs for uh, 3.0, and it's changed the, the functionality uh, with the feature packs, which is a lot of fun to track. Um, roughly speaking, it's equivalent to, it uses WebKit, so it's equivalent to about Safari 3.1 and Safari 2, uh, when it, when, at least if you're uh, correlating versions there. Uh, Nokia provides simulators up on their website. So uh, here we have um, uh, Nokia, or sorry, the Symbian S60 version 5. I give that an A grade. Uh, it works pretty well. Um, there's no reason not to support it. And then there's the, the version 3. This is, so this is uh, 3 service pack 2, or feature pack 2. I give it a B grade, uh, even though it's, so it's like Safari 2-ish. And so you get all the usual Safari 2 bugs kind of deal with there. And that's a whole bunch of fun that you can, you can dig up and relive again. Um, so this is feature pack one over here. Um, and supposedly the, 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 the rendering engine is identical in between feature pack one and feature pack two. But I can't get feature pack one to actually run. It always crashes. Um, so that's another thing. So I, 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 don't, I don't know if it's a, a simulator issue or something else. Um, but I, I, I'm fairly confident that it's okay simply because it's the same rendering engine, theoretically. Again, so th th this is the sort of thing that's just, it's fun to uncover and get gray hairs. And... All right, so there's a, um, another operating system based upon Symbian called Symbian UIQ. Uh, this was uh, the last releases uh, uh, that used UIQ came out in 2008. Um, it's a dead operating system now. The company that made it went bankrupt um, there are no simulators left to download. Um, you, they used to link over to the Symbian website, and now it's just a 404. Um, and so I eventually found some simulators in a forum thread on a random site from some guy in Russia uh, who had totally legit copies of the simulator to download. Um, so he had some copies of the simulator for 3.0, 3.1, and 3.3, but not 3.2 for whatever reason. That, that's the actual one I wanted. Um, it, so, but the, the nice thing is that I don't, I don't stress about it too much because it, it's shipping with Opera Mobile as its default browser. So I can just test Opera Mobile on different platforms. I can hopefully assume that it'll, it'll be running very similarly. Um, so these are the, the devices, the, the emulators themselves. I have not yet been able to get an internet connection working with these devices. Since there's no documentation, since all the websites are gone. Uh, so, if you want to go down this route, you can, you can have your own little party there. Um, and of course, there's iPhone, uh, always popular. Uh, so, one thing, there's a couple of great things about uh, the iPhone, and, and uh, at least in developing for it, is that um, iPhone has an ironclad grasp on their market and on the carriers. Because they, they say that if you are shipping an iPhone device, you have to provide updates uh, for the devices themselves. So if you look at the upgrade chart here, virtually every single user of an iPhone device is on the latest release, uh, 3.1. And uh, I'll get into this a bit later, but the, this is not the case for most devices. Uh, uh, most, most carriers are actually very, very stingy with their updates. They do not... Uh, want to be shipping you know, many, many megabytes over the air or by CD or however they were shipping. Um, and so what you'll have are phones that are running ancient versions, like the, the Symbian version 3. Like that one's like six years old at this point. For, um, but it, people are still using it. And uh, they aren't getting updates to the latest versions. So at least, at least for uh, uh, iPhone, it's it's a very sane thing to try and support, which is great. Uh, 